Picture this. You're in a dimly lit hallway in the 1970s. A phone in the wall starts ringing, an unmistakable metallic trill that slices through the air. You grab the receiver, feel the weight of solid Bakelite, and when it's time to call someone back, you don't tap a screen, you don't push a button, you spin a disc. And in that slow, clicking return of the dial, an entire hidden mechanism springs to life. For something so simple on the outside, it's surprisingly mechanical on the inside, almost like a tiny machine shop tucked into a household object. So today, we're cracking it open, piece by piece, to understand the mystery hidden inside every nostalgic ring. This is Rotary Phone, how it works. Right here on History of Simple Things. Before digital tones and touchscreens, a phone wasn't a smart device, it was a precision instrument. The rotary phone was basically a conversion machine. You provided physical motion, and it translated that motion into electrical pulses that traveled across miles of copper wires. That's the heart of the rotary phone's design. Not software, not circuitry, but motion, momentum, and timing. When you place your finger in one of the dial's holes and spin it clockwise until it stops, you're actually winding a spring-loaded governor system inside. As you release it, the dial glides back to its home position at a controlled speed. That controlled return is what makes the entire system function. Without that smooth, standardized release, every rotary phone ever made would speak a different electrical language. Everyone remembers the sound of the dial spinning back. Those clicks weren't just quirky sound effects. They were the phone literally transmitting numbers. Every number on the dial corresponds to a specific count of electrical interruptions. Dialing a 5 sends 5 interruptions down the line. Dialing a 0 sends 10. Your phone wasn't sending a number like modern phones do. It was tapping the line like a telegraph operator. These interruptions were precise breaks in the electrical current. The switching equipment in the phone company's central office listened to those breaks and moved mechanical switches accordingly, forming pathways through a maze of relays and step-by-step -step selectors. Every digit you dialed guided the system through a layered mechanical network until the circuit reached the phone you were trying to reach. It was basically a mechanical GPS built long before digital routing existed. Inside the rotary dial lives a tiny but crucial mechanism, the governor. Imagine two small arms spinning as the dial returns. As they spin outward due to centrifugal force, they act as a brake regulating the speed of the dial's return. If you release the dial and it snapped back too fast, the clicks would be too close together, confusing the switches. If it moved too slowly, the signal might time out. Every pulse had to be precisely spaced, and the governor ensured the phone spoke in a consistent mechanical rhythm. What's fascinating is that this system didn't require electricity or circuitry to function. It relied purely on physics, momentum, resistance, and consistent rotational speed. When you place the receiver on the cradle, two small plungers push down in the hook switch, cutting power to the phone. Lifting the receiver released the switch, completing the circuit and signaling the central office that your line was active. That's why you immediately heard a dial tone. The phone company was basically saying, we see you, go ahead, dial away. And only after that moment did the rotary mechanism matter. Unlike smartphones that are always active, a rotary phone slept the moment the receiver was down and woke up the moment the hook switch rose. Simple, mechanical, effective.
Even though the rotary dial gets the spotlight, the handset itself was an engineering standout. The transmitter, what you spoke into, was filled with carbon granules. When sound waves hit the diaphragm, the pressure on those granules changed, altering electrical resistance. Those variations became electrical signals that traveled across the network. The receiver, the part you held to your ear, used an electromagnet and a thin diaphragm. When electrical variations reached the receiver, they caused the diaphragm to vibrate, recreating the sound waves of the original voice. No speakers, no amplifiers, no batteries, just electromagnetism and carbon powder doing the job. One of the most iconic parts of a rotary phone was the mechanical ringer. When someone called your number, the central office sent an alternating current through the line. Inside your phone were two metal bells and a clapper mounted on a small motor-like device. That incoming current energized the coil and made the clapper jump back and forth, striking the bells and producing that piercing, unmistakable ring. It wasn't just loud by accident. It had to be heard through thick walls, noisy kitchens, and busy households. And because the ringer used alternating current, it didn't interfere with the direct current used for talking. You can't talk about how a rotary phone works without talking about the world it connected to. When you dialed a number, every pulse traveled through the copper line to a local exchange, where large electromechanical switching systems interpreted your sequence. These systems, like the Stroger switch, move physical contacts over racks of terminals. For every digit you dialed, a wiper arm moved a corresponding number of steps. This means your rotary phone wasn't just mechanical, it was part of a continent-wide mechanical network. Every click you sent caused a click somewhere miles away. It was almost like your phone and the central office were dancing in sync, step by step, pulse by pulse. By the 1960s, a faster system was needed. Touch tone didn't rely on pulses. It used combinations of frequencies. Instead of clicking 10 times for a zero, you just pressed a button and instantly sent a dual tone signal. It was faster, quieter, and required less physical force. But the rotary system had to be phased out slowly because the network itself was designed to respond to pulses. It took decades before pulse-based switching equipment disappeared completely. There's something undeniably charming about the interaction. You can feel every digit. You hear every click. You sense the tension of the returning dial. Unlike modern phones that hide everything behind glass and software, the rotary phone shows its process proudly. It makes you part of the mechanism. Turning the dial isn't just an input, it's a motion that engages gears, springs, and switches as if you're operating a miniature machine every time you make a call. And that tactile ritual is exactly why the rotary phone remains iconic long after its era. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.